In this video, I'll be going over six bad habits that you don't realize you're making and how to fix them, and six good habits that you need to start doing. And starting out with a good habit you should build, we have the tuck rule. Now I'm calling it this because I don't really know what to call it, but basically all it means is instead of sitting here holding an angle on the doorway like this, you tuck yourself in this doorway and wait for audio like footsteps and then you swing out. The reason why this is better than sitting here holding an angle on the open like this is because if an attacker comes around the corner and you're just standing still, they're going to see you first before you see them. Them. The reason for this is because of peeker's advantage, and if you don't know what that is, basically whoever is moving is going to see the person standing still first, and they're going to be able to get off about two to three bullets before the person can even react. So when you tuck yourself and wait to hear footsteps, you're removing the advantage that the person swinging gets, and you're actually turning it into your favor. Once you hear them moving, you can swing out and then have peeker's advantage for yourself. This isn't the best way to do it in every situation, but a lot of times I'll see people holding an angle out in the open like this, and the person comes around a corner and they fry them before they can even react. And if they just tucked themselves and waited for audio and then swung out, they would have won the gunfight. And a bad habit a lot of players make is unleaning when getting into a gunfight. And what I mean by this is basically you'll see a lot of players, even very good players with good aim, if they were already leaned left, they'll lean back to the left so they're in the center once they start shooting. So let's say there was someone on this doorway and I go to fight them, they'll go something like that. Another common thing you'll see is someone leaning the wrong way or they're just not leaning the right way. Which way you lean is going to determine your aim. So if I'm peeking a corner and I'm moving to the left, Left like this, I want to stay leaned left the whole time. I don't want to unlean. I don't want to lean to the right. Nothing like that. Because as you can see, let's say I was aiming at someone over there and I unlean. As you can see, my crosshair moves completely out of the way. So you want to stay lean the way that you were already leaned when you go to take the gunfight. Another good habit that you should pick up is shooting glass off of windows. Now you may have seen people doing this and you might not know why. And even if you do know why, you don't know how big the difference is. So the reason as to why you shoot glass off of windows is so that you can hear what's going on on the other side better. You can hear footsteps, gunshots, someone going on a drone, and most importantly, someone repelling a lot better if you shoot the glass. So I'm going to do a test so you can see the difference between when you shoot the glass off versus when you don't. But another bad habit that I see a lot that can get you killed is breaking barricades. Now let me explain. I'm going to go through a common routine that you'll see a lot of players doing and I'll let you see if you can figure out what's wrong. So first I'll break open my entry point, throw out a drone, and then I drone the rooms that are close to my entry point. Once I see it's clear, I'll then take the map control. Now that would be fine if no one knows you're here, but if someone were to be waiting right here for you to throw out your drone, or maybe if they wait right here, something like that, they could easily run out on you once you throw out your drone and you're sitting here. This is going to be even more common when you're working with windows as soon as they see you open up the window and then you throw your drone in a very common thing you'll see is they'll sit under the window wait for that to happen and then jump out so an alternative way that you can go about on doorways is to shoot about half your mag into the doorway like that reload your gun so that you have a full mag and once you've droned the areas near your entry point you just get off your drone and shoot a few bullets into the barricade like that so now it's a very little chance that someone's going to run out on you and it's still going to be super quick to enter the building and with a window all you have to do is punch it once drone whatever you're going to drone and then once you get off of the drone just punch it one more time and then you can jump in but a good habit that will improve your aim is your crosshair placement now to start off your crosshair placement should almost always be at head level the reason is so you can get easy headshots especially since siege is a one-shot headshot game and if you want a super easy way to have your crosshair always at head level all you got to do is barricade a door then you want to look for this second buckle right here on the doorway this second buckle is always going to be head level so you can go around the map with your crosshair at at this point you know just going from different spots in the map like different doorways and stuff like that and eventually when you do this enough it'll become second nature to have your crosshair there the only time that i'll recommend aiming lower than head level is if a person is one shot because it is easier to hit someone in the waist compared to the head and if they're one shot all you need is one shot to their waist or their legs or their chest or anything like that you don't need a head shot so you just hit them once in the body so that's when i'll aim low or if i know that they're crouched obviously i will aim lower but building the habit of constantly having your crosshair at head level is going to significantly improve your aim and if you want to have significantly better aim you need to stop crouching now crouching in siege is good because it does move your head so whoever is shooting at you is going to have to adjust their crosshair down to where your head level moves to but if you're spamming it or doing it at the wrong times it will only make things worse when you spam crouch as you can see my crosshair is going all over the place it's going up and down and it makes it super hard to adjust to an enemy when it's just going up and down and changing versus if i just crouch one time and now as you can see it's had like a base point so i can easily 
easily adjust it. And if I just crouch one time, the person that I'm fighting will still have to adjust their crosshair when they're fighting me. So overall, you want to crouch just one time in your gunfights or you just want to stay stood up. But another bad habit with crouching is crouching too much. I don't mean crouch spamming, I just mean being crouched too much. When you're crouched, you're obviously slower and you're an easier target to hit. So it's much better to be standing when swinging someone because you're going to come around the corner faster, which is going to lead to you having peekers advantage. So if you're going to be crouched, just make sure it's like maybe when you're holding an angle, something like that. Don't be coming around a corner like this, swinging someone when crouched. And another good habit that you should pick up is pre-placed drones. One of the worst bad habits is sitting on TikTok and drone phase and going into the round blind. You should either be droning the site for your team, pre-placing a drone near your entry point, or saving your drone in spawn and then watching your teammates drones. Like I said, it should be near your entry point of the building or near the area of the map that you need to take control of for your attack. So as an example of my plan is to open the freezer hatch and create vert, I really only have two options for my pre-placed drone. Either somewhere in bar, assuming that you're going to be entering from the skylight doing a top down clear, or you would have it in fireplace or train. You can use the bar cam to enter from the skylight easier and safer, and you can use the fireplace or train drone to actually drone out this area before you go ahead and open the hatch and create vert. Now this was just one example, but if you use pre-placed drones, you're going to notice you'll waste much less time and it's going to make it much easier to complete your goals during an attacking round. But another bad habit that's very common is reloading too much. Once again, CG is a one-shot headshot game, meaning I only need one bullet to get a kill on someone theoretically. Now it's obviously a best case scenario to have, you know, maximum amount of bullets in your clip, but I don't need a full 30 bullets in my magazine to kill one person. And another thing, reloading gives off a sound cue. In Siege, you never want to give the enemy an advantage based off of sound cues. And reloading basically lets the enemy know that you're defenseless. So you really only want to reload in situations where you're completely safe. And if you have 10, 15 bullets in a magazine, don't instantly reload because you can definitely get the job done with 10, 15 bullets. Remember, it only takes one headshot and a few bullets to the body anyways. You don't want to give off that sound cue. And like I said, you'll be much more vulnerable when reloading. But a great habit to pick up when droning is the one room rule. Now, I kind of made that terminology up, but what I mean by that is when droning, you don't want to drone five rooms ahead of where your entry point is because the information that you gathered 30 seconds ago could have changed once you go to actually take the map control. Let's say you're droning from top lobby. So you go in, you drone like the top of this. <coughs> Let's say you're droning in from top lobby. So you drone meeting, you drone the hallway, you drone connector, you drone electrical, and then you're right outside of sight. So what you do, you break down the doorway and you get ready to run in. <sighs> So when you drone all the way ahead of where you are, someone can easily rotate from somewhere else and end up killing you when you actually try to go take the map control. So what you want to do is you want to drone top lobby, then you want to drone meeting, and then you can drone connector. Now, if you see that these areas are clear, then you want to go ahead and try to take the map control because these are the areas that are going to be threatening to you. So once you've done that, you can hop back on your drone, continue to drone, drone through electrical, and then you can drone right outside of sight. If there's no one there, you can end up taking the map control. And you would have to set up some flank denial if you want to make this work out better. But basically what I'm trying to get at is don't drone like 30 seconds ahead because you know that that information can change by the time that you actually go to take the map control. But a bad habit that I see way too often is red pinging. All that red pinging does is just let the enemy know that they're being watched so they're going to play more aggressive. Versus if I just yellow ping, I can get the same exact information and the enemy won't know so they'll play more passive so it's going to be easier to kill them. So as you can see, if I'm playing an enemy, if it's a 1v1, when I red ping, they're not going to play passive and sit still, they're going to start moving because they know they're being watched. But versus if I yellow ping, they're probably just going to stay in the same spot so I can easily swing them. And a great habit to pick up, especially if you're roaming, is getting on cams at the start of the round. Now, like I said, this definitely helps the best when you're roaming. Like if I see someone's entering from junkyard, instead of me wasting my time in small tower with a chance of no one ever entering here, I can use the information that it's guaranteed that they're going to be pushing from this side of the map to actually rotate over there and contest them. You also want to keep in mind which operators are running. You can obviously ping them because most likely they're going to shoot the default cam anyways. So if you just ping them out of spawn, it's going to pop up on the top of your screen and you can know which operators are going to run, which is also going to help you. And as an anchor, if I'm sitting in sight to help my roamers, I can actually go on default cams to check default cams. Oh, someone's shower hall, whatever. And it's going to help your roamers. But like I said, it still definitely helps you when you're anchoring because you can tell if they're going for the main wall, if they're going to push big window, whatever they're going to do based off of their operators and where they're actually spawning and where they're running to. And the final bad habit is not subscribing and liking. No, seriously, I was planning on doing six good habits, six bad habits, but somehow I only did 11 and I didn't realize until the video is basically being posted. But if you 
do enjoy this video, like the video, and if you want to watch more of my content, then subscribe and click the video popping up on your screen.